Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So we've made it to episode number five and this is the final movement that we're gonna go over in this series. In this video, we're gonna be going over movement number five, which is the Cossack squat. Now, like I mentioned in the first video that I created, this movement is more of a bonus movement and it's only there once you have pretty much established and developed your flexibility with the other movements. So make sure that you are nailing all of the other movements and then try this one out as your final test. So the reason why I've made the Cossack squat the bonus exercise is I feel as though the Cossack requires all of the mobility and all the flexibility drills that we've been doing in the previous video combined together in order for you to develop some sort of depth in your Cossack. The great thing about the Cossack squat is that it's a combination of both compression exercises and lengthening exercises. So if you look at one side of the Cossack, you'll see that it looks very similar to a squat just that you're performing it on one side. And if you look at the other side, it looks very similar to a pancake or a middle split. So the Corsair Squat really is a combination of the last four movements that we've been covering in this video series. Now, before we get into more of the Cossack specific exercises, I would highly recommend that you prepare yourself with the squat routine that I showed in a previous video, plus the three position calf stretch that I also demonstrated in the previous video as well. So feel free to check those out. I will link those two videos down below in the description. Plus I think I will stick one on top of me as well. So you can check that out before you get into these Cossack stretches. So the reason why I'm suggesting these two exercises as your prep work is number one, we want to make sure that our joints and muscles around our shins are nice and relaxed before we get into the deeper stretches of the Cossack. And number two, we just want to make sure that the calves are nice and loose before we get into the Cossack stretches, just so that when we're working on the dorsiflexion range, the calf isn't a restriction in the movement. Speaking of the dorsiflexion range, when it comes to the Cossack squat, it is that part of the movement that most people really struggle with. So to try and get the heel on the ground and to get the need to push beyond the level of your toes, that becomes increasingly difficult if you've got restrictions around the ankles, the shin muscles, and even to a certain degree in the quads. So in today's exercises, a large portion of the movements will be focused on that dorsiflexion range. And I'll be teaching you a couple of PNF contractions that you can perform whilst you're in position to get extra range immediately. So it's not just getting that range after a period of time but you should be able to see the results immediately so long as you've got a tape measure or a ruler just to measure where your range is at the start now i have to note that a few of these stretches are not mine i've not discovered these i've actually come across these on two of my favorite people that i follow on youtube number one is my favorite mentor kit lockling i always mentioned him in previous videos and if you've got time i would highly recommend that you check out his youtube channel plus go onto his website stretchtherapy.net for all of the information and extra details about pnf stretches and stretching in general and the second person is Tom Merrick. Now I've mentioned him in a previous video. I think it was the first video when we were talking about the Snow Angels. And I highly recommend also checking out his channel. He's got a whole bunch of stretches on his YouTube channel. And just like Kit Lachlan, he does go into quite a bit of detail in regards to what is happening when you're performing those PNF contractions. So definitely do check those guys out. And I'll also link his YouTube channel down below in the description too. Now, when it comes to the Cossack squat, there are a couple of restrictions that a lot of people generally tend to have, which stops them from getting that depth in the Cossack. So number one is, again, like I mentioned previously, it's that dorsiflex movement, trying to get that heel on the ground and pushing that knee beyond the level of your toes. Number two, it's having that compression to get into that deep squat position. And number three, it's having the flexibility in the hamstrings and around the hips to push one of your legs out to the side and to be able to lengthen the leg as well. So in this video, I'm gonna be specifically focusing on that dorsiflexion movement. So with that out of the way, let's get straight into these stretches. Stretch number one is the elevated dorsiflexion stretch. Now for this stretch, all you're gonna do here is place your foot on an elevated surface. Depending on how tight you are in the ankles, um, you can increase the height of the box or the surface that you're sat on. Now, I would recommend that you start off with a height that is around shin level, and then as you become better at it, then you can slowly start decreasing the height. Or if you feel as though you're struggling to maintain that position and, and keep that heel on the ground, feel free to increase the height as well. So to get into position, we're gonna place our foot on that elevated surface. 
We just want to get into a nice, deep dorsiflex compressed position. So place your heel down and then think about trying to get your bottom to rest on the heel as well. If you're extremely tight in this position, you'll notice that there's a greater gap between your calves and your hamstrings, which is perfectly fine as well. If you feel like that's causing you any sort of discomfort in the knee, feel free to also place a cushion or something that's quite soft in between the gap between your calf and your hamstring. So from here, we're gonna go through an active sequence. Firstly, you're gonna move your knee forward and back just so that we're creating that extra range and that dorsiflex movement. And again, just pay attention to where your heel is as well. We wanna make sure that the heel is fully grounded as we're pushing that knee forward. Next, we're just gonna perform side to side movements. So we wanna focus on collapsing the arch as you're pushing the knee inwards. And then you're just gonna push the knee out and go onto the outside of your toes. Again, when you're going into this movement, try and exaggerate the movement as much as possible, just to get more benefit from the actual stretch. From here, we're just gonna go into a couple of circles. So we're gonna go five circles one way and then five circles the other way. I like to stick to around five circles, but feel free to increase the amount that you want to do. So maybe push it up to 10 if you prefer. And then finally, we're just gonna go back into that dorsiflex position. So we're pushing that knee beyond the level of our toes. And we're just gonna shift our weight through the knee. So place your palms on top of your knee and just press a bit of weight through the knee. This should create a stretch around the ankles going into the shin muscles and maybe around the Achilles heel as well. So from here, we can perform a couple of contractions as well whilst we're in position. Contraction number one is we're gonna try and press the knee down with our hands. We're gonna resist that using the muscles around our ankles by pushing the knee back against the resistance of the hands. And just like the previous contractions, you're gonna hold this for five seconds, relax, take a deep breath in, and then as you're exhaling, you're gonna try and push that knee slightly forward. So you're going into more of that dorsiflexion movement. And then feel free just to move the knee forward and back side to side as well in between the contractions, if you feel like that's gonna help you out. So for contraction number two, we're gonna use that same position, keep our palms on top of our knees. We're gonna push the knee forward in that dorsiflex range, try and get into your maximum range. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and lift our toes off the ground. So you're thinking about trying to get your toes as high as possible. By doing this, this is gonna invoke another contraction. You're gonna hold that for five seconds, relax, take a deep breath in. And then as you exhale, pull the knee out of position and then push the knee back into position just to see if you can get any more extra range in that position. Feel free to hold this for anything between 30 seconds to a minute. Pull yourself out of position very slowly, shake that leg off and then swap sides. We can also perform a similar movement using a stick or a dowel in between the gap between your calf and your hamstrings. Now this variation was recommended to me by Kit Lachlan. So if you go onto his stretch therapy YouTube channel, you'll see this in greater detail. Now there are two good reasons why the stick is more beneficial than just using your palms. Number one, it will work on releasing the fascial tension. So it's almost like you're foam rolling your hamstring and your calves. It's gonna feel a little uncomfortable when you get into position. So go very slowly. And then once you become more comfortable, it will feel a lot better and number two it gives you better control in that dorsiflexion movement so we can move that knee forward and back a lot better with a stick so try that out and if you've got any more questions about this variation feel free to check out Kit Lockling's variation of this exact stretch stretch number two is the weighted dorsiflexion ECR now this might sound complicated, but what it basically means is that we're gonna go into our end range of that dorsiflexion movement, and then we're gonna perform a contraction in that end range, but we're gonna also place a weight on top of that knee. So then we've got that consistent loading on that dorsiflexion movement and specifically in the ankles. So what you're gonna do here is grab yourself a weight, anything between three to five kilos starting off. And if you wanna go slightly heavier, feel free to do that as well. What I'm using in this video is an eight kilo kettlebell. Now it was this movement that was recommended by Tom Merrick. I will link his original video down below in the description and he talks about it in greater detail, um, but I'll just go over the basic movement and I'll also add my own extra touch to the actual movement just so that you get an opposite contraction as well. So to get in position, you're gonna do the same thing that we did on the previous stretch, which was the elevated dorsiflexion movement, but we're gonna go onto the ground instead. So you're gonna go into a squat position, the deepest squat that you can get into, and then you're gonna move one leg out of the way and rest it behind you. So then you are loading all of the weight on that one leg. 
From here, we're gonna go into our maximum dorsiflexion range, and then we're gonna grab our weight and place it on top of our knee. Make sure it's not resting on your kneecap, make sure it's on the fleshy part of your quad. And then from here, we're gonna go into our first contraction. So you're gonna get into that maximum range of your dorsiflexion, and then we're gonna think about trying to lift the toes up. So this is that ECR movement. It's known as the end range closing contraction. By lifting the toes up, you're gonna create contraction in the tibialis anterior. We're gonna hold this contraction for 10 seconds as recommended by Tom Merrick. And then you're gonna rest for about five seconds by pulling the knee away out of that dorsiflexion movement. And then you're gonna repeat that two more times. So we're performing three repetitions in total. Once you've done the three contractions, you're gonna pull your knee away, and then we're just gonna move in and out of that dorsiflexion movement 10 times. So each time we go into position, we're thinking about trying to go deeper into the dorsiflexion movement. Again, focus on your heel as well. Make sure that heel is grounded as you're performing this movement. One thing to make sure when we're going into position is that our hip doesn't collapse whilst we're going into that deep range of our squat. So to get into the right alignment, just think about trying to get your knee directly over your foot so it's in line with your toes. You're gonna repeat this exercise for three sets on that one leg. In between the sets, feel free to also shake your legs off and then repeat the same movement and the same contractions again on the opposite side. Now, as a bonus, I like to do the contraction that we did in the previous stretch. So we're going back into that maximum range of our dorsiflexion movement. And then you're gonna think about trying to press your knee against the resistance of the weight. So we're pushing the knee into the weight and that should create a contraction around the ankles. In terms of programming, you wanna start off doing this once or twice a week at maximum, and then as you get better at this movement, feel free to increase the amount of sessions that you are doing per week. Now, if you're experiencing any sort of pinching sensation on the ankle, feel free to also do this movement with a resistant band, preferably a thick resistant band attached around the ankle. So you're distracting yourself away from that pinching sensation, and then that way you're purely focusing on that ECR movement. Movement number three is the weighted dorsiflexion lunge. Now, the difference between this variation of the weighted lunge compared to the normal weighted lunge is that we're trying to push our knee beyond that 90 degree angle. So in the normal conventional weighted lunge, you keep the front knee at 90 degrees, and then you're thinking about just trying to get that back knee as close to the ground as possible without touching the ground. For this variation, we're actually purposely pushing that knee further forward. So we're really going into that deep dorsiflexion range of the ankle. And just like the previous stretches, just be mindful about the position of your heel. We wanna make sure that heel is grounded as we're pushing that knee forward. And if you're really struggling to maintain the heel on the ground, feel free to also perform this on an elevated surface. So grab yourself a step up or something that you can use to elevate the front foot. To perform this movement, all you're gonna do is stand on that elevated surface. And then as you're lunging, you're thinking about lunging forward and you're trying to really push that knee beyond the range of your toes in that dorsiflexion range. So you're gonna perform anything between eight to 10 repetitions for three to five sets. And then on the last repetition, you're gonna go into your maximum range of your dorsiflexion, and we're gonna hold it for anything between five to 10 seconds. The next exercise we're going on to is the goblet squat. So for this, you're gonna grab yourself a kettlebell or a dumbbell, and you're gonna hold it in front of you. Now, if you're struggling to get the heels down on the ground when you're going into your deepest range of your goblet squat, feel free to place a pair of plates or a couple of books or anything that you have lying around at home, and then we're gonna perform the same movement again. As you get better with that dorsiflexion movement, you're gonna try and decrease the height of that elevated surface. So again, we're really trying to emphasize that dorsiflexion movement. So we're pushing those knees forward. Again, be mindful of keeping the heels down on the elevated object. You're performing three to five sets again for 10 repetitions and feel free to do exactly what you did in the lunges which is holding that last repetition for about five to ten seconds and the final exercise we're going to focus on is the back to wall cossack squat so what we're going to do here is place our back against the wall and then you're going to think about trying to lunge towards one side of your body as you're going down make sure that your back is still in contact with the wall and you're using the wall as a support once you get to your maximum range, try and shuffle your body around so you are comfortable in that final position. So there are a couple of things that you can do to feel more comfortable in this position. Number one, if you're really struggling to lengthen that leg that's out to the side, feel free to also go onto your heels. So you're going onto your heels, lifting the toes off the ground, and then also think about bending at the knee too. So that will really help to reduce the amount of pressure that goes on the inside of the knees and on the inner part of your hamstrings. 
And the second thing I like to do is use my arm as a support to place underneath that lengthened leg. And then that way, as you're going down, you've got something to rest the inner part of your thigh on. So this exercise can be done as a passive exercise. So you're just resting in the deepest range or what you could do is perform repetitions. So you're going down into the deepest range and then you're standing yourself up and doing the same thing on the opposite side. So each time we perform an extra rep, we're trying to go deeper into the stretch. So that is pretty much it for this week's video. If you enjoy this video, hit that like button. And if you've got any questions, feel free to drop them down below in the comment section as usual. Now, as I was running through the footage on my camera, I noticed that most of these exercises this week were all on dorsiflexion. So I feel as though there are other components to the COSAC that still need to be addressed. So what I might do is create a part two and a part three in a future video. So we've completed this series of videos and I will move on to a brand new series starting from next week. So make sure you're hitting that subscribe button to stay notified and I shall see you in the next video.